uh, next up, we have EnviroGold Global, um, a clean technology company that is uh, um, actively focused on uh, the metallurgical side of the industry. So uh, here to tell us and introduce the story is uh, Mark Thorpe, CEO. Uh, Mark, please uh, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Misha. And uh, good morning, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm standing between you and lunch, so I promise I won't dally. Um, I grew up in, the, in a coal mining town in England. Um, my grandpa worked in the mines, so it was logical that I joined the mining business. Um, wasn't very interested in going underground, uh, so I joined the, the easy part of it, which is the ESG, um, tailings management, community, environmental stuff. And that led me through the past 40 years working on four continents in more than 40 countries. But I tell you about EnviroGold today. The first thing I will tell you about EnviroGold is we're not a gold company. This is an artifact of, uh, of it, the evolution of the company and we will be changing our name. Um, what we're doing is we're doing technology for the recovery of metals. Um, we've actually developed an approach that will allow us to liberate precious, critical, and strategic metals from complex tailings. And as part of that, we're very fortunate in the, in the fact that we're able to work around the world. And we, we're developing this for applications, not just in one location, but for much larger uh, area around the world. Our technology itself, most people look at pyritic material as very complicated. We've had a lot of experience. Uh, my team has got more than 300 years of experience in total. Um, we're liberating metals that are not previously recovered. We do an acid leach, and it's a proprietary acid leach that we use. The difference between our technology and the majority of the technology is ours is done at relatively low temperature. It's about 85 Celsius. Why 85 Celsius? Because it's an exothermic reaction and it just operates at that temperature nicely. It's also done in atmospheric pressure and it takes place very quickly. We get most of the oxidation of the pyrite within an hour. Because we're dealing with tailings, most of the sites are already disturbed. They're brownfields very low requirement for permitting. And we also reduce the environmental liability of the wastes. So there's benefits all around. You got a tailing that's 30% pyrite. It needs a lot of management in the long term. When we finished with it, the pyrite levels are down. The heavy metal levels are down. And the Arsenic itself is precipitated out, that sort of thing. But we look towards a different type of closure in this particular case. And in addition to our, our technology that we're developing, um, we have a couple of, we have a few patents for water treatment technology that we just recently acquired. So we're very pleased to be starting to develop that particular part. Our business model is fairly simple. We enter into agreements with the owners of the tailings. We enter in a, into an agreement to process the tailings and then return the tailings back to the owner. We do the metallurgical testing up front. We finance and deploy the technology required. And we do, we're doing that in a scalable way. So what we're trying to do is to get in there quickly. The, the difference between our business model and most of the exploration business models is that we can be in production in under two years. What we've heard of today were a lot of exploration projects with a lot of gold, but it's gonna take them a long time to bring this into development. And we have right now about $5 billion worth of, uh, of project opportunities in our pipeline. The market for the technology is quite incredible. Um, we particularly looked at uh, the VMS deposits around the world We've evaluated 350 different projects. We've picked five that we really like right now. Got one of those under contract and we're negotiating on several others. Our first project 
is a really sweet project. It makes uh, 350 million in free cash flow. And I'll talk about that on the next slide. Just look at the numbers. The numbers in terms of metals, in tailings, readily available are absolutely staggering. Looking at our first project is the Helia gold mine in Tasmania. This is a very interesting project. It operated to about 2010. The tailings themselves are extremely acidic. As you can see here, they're covered. The, the permitting requirement is for two meters of water cover. If they left them like that, that two meters of water cover would need to be managed in perpetuity. Helia tried to get the metals out of this for about eight years. They came to Envaro Gold and said, could you help us? And my team were able to get the metal out in a, just about two years. We've been working on it really hard for two years. Um, the, the project itself is phenomenal. Um, 950,000 ounces equivalent. They're already dredging in there to, to float this again. So the access to the tailings is very good. They were getting 5% of the gold and 30% of the silver. Our process gets 80% of the gold and 90% of the silver. We're also getting some copper and some zinc as well as a, as a nice addition as we go. The project itself, as you can see, as a, uh, an MPV-10, and we didn't use six, uh, we used 10 this time, um, an MPV-10 of, of 175 million, the IRR at 66%, and that was at, uh, at 1650 gold. Um, I'll show you some numbers on, on the upside there. And we're estimating right now the, the plant um, capex at around 90 million. We have completed a PEA on this. It was, it was registered last year and we're continuing to work our way forward. Where we are with this particular project, we're currently in the pilot plant testing stage. We're working with ALS laboratories out of Perth, Australia. Most of the actual technology itself was developed in conjunction with core resources. And you're probably familiar with core resources. They developed the Albion project for Glencore. Um, we're actually, uh, they did a lot of uh, our initial work on this, which was very exciting. We then transferred that across to ALS and all of the data that we've got out on the pre-pilot pre plant testing confirmed all of the work that we've done and confirmed the numbers that we've got here. I will tell you that we did that at 1650. I'll just put up a few numbers there to allow you to understand as the gold price increases, what the uh, revenues do uh, for us here. This is all based on the uh, on the PEA data. We haven't updated that. We will be updating the, the technical report in the next little while. As I mentioned, I'm not going to take you very long from lunch. Um, our catalysts for 2023 are exceptional. Um, we raised 2.8 million already this year in a particularly difficult market. People like our story. They like what we're doing, and it fits well with the ESG, low carbon, and it also gives access to the strategic and critical metals that are required for the transition. Whether you believe in the transition or not, that's a different question, but the governments and people are putting a lot of, a lot of money into this, so it's really nice. We've completed our um, pre-lab pre test program, and then we'll be updating our technical report, we will have the technical report updated in Q2. And we'll complete the pilot plan in Q2 to validate the data. The really interesting thing about our technology is we've brought together a series of tested and proven pieces in a new way. It's an elegant solution to a complicated problem. We have the acid leach which brings the critical, the base metals into solution. It allows access and it liberates the gold and silver that were previously trapped. Gold and silver remain in the, in the sludge that's left after the acid leach. We divert off the 
the acid for base metal recovery. In, in Helia, we're recovering copper and zinc. And then the gold and silver goes off to a conventional gold and sil silver recovery circuit. The key thing here that we do differently is the recycling of the catalysts. Catalysts that we use in this particular case are recycled back to the start of the circuit, which allows us to keep our costs down relative to everything else. And that's the piece that we're testing at the, at the lab in ALS. And this is the work that's really exciting for us. It's working very, very nicely right now. And we'll expect to uh, complete the pilot plant in the next uh, six to eight weeks. It's, it's very exciting. Where do we go from the update to the technical report? We'll have the DFS, and then we will start the design, the, the, the final engineering and construction decision before the end of the year this year. As I mentioned, it's very quick to market. Negotiating on the project, doing the development work, putting the project into production under two years. Just to give you a little bit of the capital structure of the company right now, market caps around $37 million. These are all Canadian numbers um, with 200 million shares outstanding. The reason that we've been able to advance so quickly is the team. I have a phenomenal group of people. Um, I, I just, wherever I go, I'm very lucky in the way and the, the way I can get teams to work. And we've got a, a phenomenal group of people. Rock Hill here. If anybody's ever watched James Bond, and they have that Q guy, the one who's the, always doing the odd stuff. Well, this is this is my Q. He comes up with all of this stuff, puts it together. I'll tell you a quick story about about uh, Brock. We were looking to precipitate out some some arsenic, as ferric arsenate, the, the other day, and he said, "Mark, he said, Mark, we'll raise the pH to pH 2.65, and the, the arsenic's going to come out." Unfortunately. We only got to pH 2.6 and the arsenic dropped out. He was off by 0.05 of a, of a pH unit. Phenomenal individual. We've got a great group of people. They've worked all the way around the world. And uh, we're fortunate today to have our chair, Alan Bizanson, sitting with us. Um, I'm really, really delighted to be able to lead this group. I've been leading them for the last two years. And we've made huge advances with the technology and we're starting to get interest from, shall we say, larger companies in what we can do. Why would you join us? We need the medals. Everybody here agrees that we need the medals. It's a great opportunity. In this particular case, it's an elegant solution to a complicated problem. We've got significant near-term cash flow. We've got a pipeline of projects. And we've got a great management team that are ready to implement. We've got the multiple catalysts coming in 2023. And we're essentially the first mover in the space. There are very successful tailings projects around the world. In the VMS space, we're different and we can do it quickly. So with that, I would say, join us. Fantastic story. There's the opportunity for short-term success as we build out the business into something that's going to be a change, not only for environmental liability, because we reduce the environmental liability of the tailings. It adds free cash flow to the owners, and it fits very, very nicely with the ESG requirements that companies are looking for today and that companies must include as part of their portfolio. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much. And I'll take some questions. Thank you, Mark. Do we have any questions for Mark and EnviroGold? Okay, right. 
Yeah. So, so these these large uh, BMS t tailings have got pyrite in them. And for those of you who are not familiar with pyrite, it's it's fool's gold, and it's and it when it oxidizes, it creates acidic drainage. The acidic drainage then mobilizes the heavy metals. And if it gets out, which it has been known to do occasionally, it can create problems. In our particular case, because we're oxidizing the pyrite, we're reducing the potential for acidic drainage from these tailings. And when the tailings are placed back in the tailing storage facility, particularly for instance, for the Helia project, we should be able to close it to a dry closure and not have the requirement for a, a water cover in perpetuity. This is not just with the smaller projects, it's with some of the bigger projects around the world. Um, the Sudbury nickel tailings, for instance, that has a lot of sulfide in it, that needs to be managed for a long, long time. And this particular technology would apply across the board. We tweak it for the individual tailings. We've tried it on several, the sulfitic tailings, and it's worked on all, all of them. Thank you, Alan. Yep. From the sludge, yep. We'll just go through a standard cyanide circuit. We'll pull the pH up, cyanide it, and then drop the pH back down as we blend it with the other wastes that we produce. Well, what we've got is we've got it. We're going to rate, we have to raise the, the pH to about 10.5 for the, for the sludge. And then we've got the acid that would, because we need to get the gold out, the two then combine to give us about approximately um, a neutral tailing that can be also dried, can be a dry closure because there's not the pyrite in there. And we're aiming to get less than 1% pyrite in the, in the tailing as we go forward. First, the pilot plant that we're, we're building right now is at ALS in Perth, and we've got four tons of the material from um, Helia over in Perth right now, and we're running, we're going to be running the pilot plant. They're, they're be starting building the pilot plant in the next uh, two to three weeks, and then we'll run the pilot plant thereafter. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's really interesting because just being able to recycle the catalyst is the game changer in the process. And it's a relatively simple but elegant solution. And we're, we have actually got a patent on it. So we've got a patent pending on it. Um, so it's, a, it's quite, and the reason I like it, I've, I've been in the environmental field for, for 40 years. I've got my, my PhD is in tailings rehabilitation. So this is appropriate. <laughs> Um, and I've worked on everything from coal to diamonds um, in 40 different countries. This project brings together everything that I've worked for. And it's a profitable metal production that addresses the transition economy. Helia, Helia Gold Mines, we have, a, we have a, uh, a, a tailings processing agreement with Helia Gold Mines. Um, what Hellier is doing right now is they're taking a, so they, they stopped production in 2010. They then um, tried to solve the, get the gold out. There's, there's 2.5 grams a ton of gold in the tailings, and there's 150 grams a ton of silver in the tailings, just sitting there. Anybody would welcome that as a, as a gold mine today anyway, you know, for a million ounces equivalent. And so what we did with Helia, we entered into a tailings processing agreement. They're doing a flotation on that tailings right now. What we'll do is we'll take the tailings out of that flotation. They get very little of the gold and the silver out. We'll run that through our process, produce a copper concentrate, a zinc concentrate, and then gold and silver as metal. The tailings then go back to the owner 
and the owner places them in the tailored storage facility. When they finish their processing, there'll still be about 5 million tons in the tailings themselves. We have the right to dredge that material out and process it. And then once again, then that'll go back in. We don't own it. We own the right to sell the concentrates and the metals that we use, that we produce. Sorry, not we use, that we produce. Yes, sir. That, that, that's an excellent question. There are, there are three real um, business models that we can do. Um, <coughs> we, we would do most of the design engineering with Sedgman Engineering, which we've contracted, a big engineering company. We like them because they do modular equipment. We would then contract the operation of the, of the facility. And then my team, as you can see, it's a relatively small team. My team would then go on to the next one. That operator would do it. For the larger companies, um, we're aiming to do uh, a licensing agreement. So if we got a, a large company that wanted to do it, they would then go ahead and they would build it. And we would just have a royalty, say just on a very large sailing storage facility. That could be quite a royalty for a long time. We would then go ahead and do the next one and the next one. The, the key to, to the success of the company is the team that can develop the application for the specific Saving storage facilities that we're going to be working with. And we've actually been asked by another company to evaluate live tailings that hasn't even got into their tailing storage facility. So they want us to add on the catalytic converter, if you like, to their existing processing plant. So there's numerous opportunities. An older, facil an older facility. I got lunch. They, the three minutes doesn't matter. They, they're interested. Um, so you've got a facility that's closed. Um, you've got an operating facility, and then you've got something like Hellier, where you would pull from the tailing storage facility and put it back there. So three different models, all of which we think contribute well to Envirogold's future. Yes, I think the gentleman on the front. I would, I, I would, I love your last option where we get all the gold, but that unfortunately doesn't work very well in this. So what we'll do is we'll do um, debt, debt and equity financing combination for uh, the processing plant. The tailings agreement that we have with Hellier, um, up to twenty-four million dollars a year is split fifty-fifty. Beyond twenty-four million dollars, so. Mil you know, a million dollars a month each. Um, and then after that, it's split 65% for Embargo Gold, 35% for Hellion. And they get the benefits of the environmental liability of their tenant storage facility being reduced at the same time. Yes, Wes. Um, less than 1% pyrite, um, ferric arsenate precipitated out, and we've, we're just starting on the, on the leach testing on that, on that tailing now, but yes, yes. It's all in closed circuit. What we're, what we're doing is we'll neutralize on the way out to tailings and cyanide destruct at the same time. Um, and then we're obviously, obviously going to meet the local discharge requirements and um, will be ICMC compliant, International Cyanide Management Code compliant for that particular piece of the operation. I mean, it's a million ounces, almost 900 and something, just sitting there. It's fabulous. There are lots of tailings, unfortunately. Most of the metallurgical managers get paid on how much gold they recover and they don't leave very much left. So unless it gets complicated. What, what, what we found is we found, did you give me the zero yet? Okay, yeah, all right. Um, what we found is, give me the one, okay. Um, what we found is 
Um, more particularly, our database is phenomenal because we've got daily sampling of the material that goes out into the tailing spawn. Why? Because the metallurgical manager, she gets paid on the difference between the head grade and the tail grade. And then these days it's getting even better because the survey requirements for tailing storage facilities, as you are all aware, are increasing. And they have to know exactly where they're placing the tailings almost daily. So we've got, we've got great records of exactly what's there. So we can get a, an inferred resource very, very quickly. We love it. I, I think I think they're they're a little slow on the uptake, and they they're a little annoyed that somebody else is thinking about what we're doing. Um, we've got the patented technology. We're 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 in the final negotiations on 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 one deal right now. Um, that's all I can say. I can't say anything else. Right? But we're proving up something that's a combination of putting putting different things together um, in a new way. That's all. Uh, there's about uh, 10, 10, oh, sorry, yeah, the plant, we're, what we're going to do with the plants at Helia is we'll build a, a phase one plant uh, running 500 tons a day, um, and then we'll bring in uh, units after that up to 3,000 tons a day. Because we want to, the, the last lady that was was talking wants to get into production quickly because there's a beautiful advantage to be doing that. It's a very good advantage for us to get a, a, a plant up and running quickly. No, no, what we would do is we would then design specific, we would then take project number two, we would design a smaller plant if required for that, place that at the site. Our first plant, you'll literally be able to drive it out on trucks and then bolt it together. There's a couple of big pieces that have to be stick built, um, but it's uh, it's very interesting you know, and very quick to deploy. This this is the advantage is we're 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 producing cash flow next year. Well, around around the around the Helia project itself, there's there are several other projects that have similar similar concerns. When you come up to to other locations, if you're working through Central America and Mexico, there is there are certain other projects that have similar things. And obviously in these these big sulfide deposits that are being exploited in other locations. Um, they they the owner the owner owns the tailings. We just have the processing rights. So in this particular case Helia Gold Mines owns the tailings. We process them and we give them back to Helia Gold Mines. That's, it would all be the same thing. We don't want to own, we don't really want to own anything. Um, our, our ideal model, if you like, is to be able to take our technology, take, take what we've developed, apply it, have the, have the company build and, build and operate the plant and we take a royalty. That's the, that's the, the dream, the vision as we move forward. And we're, we're the technology supplier for base metal, critical metal, strategic metal recovery, and of course, quite a bit of gold and silver. Um, I can't really say that right now. It's subject to board approval, but in the next little while. Well, you started off by saying you don't want to get in between us and Lawrence. Hey, I didn't. So. <laughs> they did. Not me. I, I, hey, I just gave you the, the conversation, and it was taken from there. So. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you very much, Mark. Thank you.